Welcome to my channel. This is where you have lots of devotionals, Bible studies, and encouragement through your faith work. Now, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll see you Hello, soon. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Ifoma Samuel. I'm excited that you're here. This is our day 128, and we are going through the book of Mark, chapter 6, all the way to Mark, chapter 7. And the theme of our discussion today is what defiles a man. So the key word there is defilement. What is it that can make you um, spiritually not clean, unclean, defilement, okay? Anything that brings a stain or contamination of, of, of some sort. Let's look at Mark chapter 7. This is where the question was posed. Mark chapter 7, verse 4 and 5. It says, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. This is the Pharisee speaking. And many other things there be which they have received to hold, okay, they have, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables. Verse 5, then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? This is where they ask that question. You know, where they're like, you're not following. If you go to uh, this, uh, if you go upwards, it's talking about how they saw them being defiled. Verse 2, and when they saw some of the, his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, the unwashing hands, they found guilt or they found fault. They are always looking for fault. Okay, there are some people that are persistently going to look for fault, going to look for something that you're doing wrong. Oh, you did not do it in this way. You did not follow the order, the prescription, all of that. And I love the response that Jesus gave. Let's go all the way to Mark chapter 15 and um, go through this uh, scriptures together. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. There's nothing that you you know that that when you when it gets to that, that, that when you eat kind of you know that that will defile you. But the things which come out of him. Now, you have a choice. Either what you're eating, what you hear, what you hear, what you um, kind of see, whichever way you, you know, whichever way your perception receives knowledge or you receive a flow of information. Now, that flow doesn't exactly defile you. So this is what it's going to defile. He said, but the things which come out of him, those things are what would defile him, okay? Those are they that defile a man. If a man have ears, let him hear. And then he entered into the house from the, um, you know, from the people and the disciples asked him concerning the parable. Because it's a parable. You have a choice, okay? You have a choice how you process what is in your heart. You have a choice how you process the information that you receive, all the things that we see. There are many things we cannot unsee or unhear. But how does our heart receive them? How do we process them? Eventually, when we process them, we begin to act. All right? That is where the defilement comes in. The, the processing of this, this information, this data that our, our, our brain, our mind is receiving, that processing, how do we process it? That's why the Bible says the heart, you know, the heart of man is desperately wicked. And again, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Those are common verses that we know, but why is it that it's still tied up, okay? It's still tied up. Those are the things that will defile you. Out of the abundance of the heart, you know, that is what you're going to say. That's what you're going to perform. So it's your actions, your words tally exactly, okay, with the heart process, with the state of your heart. Let's go on. It says, and he said unto them, are you also without understanding too? Do you not have understanding do you not perceive that who, who's okay sorry whatsoever thing from without enter it into a man it cannot defile him right because it entered not into his heart but into his belly okay okay you're just absorbing you're just taking all of this it's figurative you're just taking all of this information you're just taking all of it and go it you know out through the drought and purging all meat. So it's not about what you're eating, like in physical terms. It's not just about um, the information that you receive, because sometimes we receive 
all kinds of things, and we're not exactly sure if it's okay. But if you go on, verse um, 20, he said, that which comes out of a man is what would defile him. Because eventually your heart is going to process these things. If it's not okay, your heart will just, if you, if you are in a sound soundness of mind, okay, your heart will just throw it out. You know this is not for you. You are a believer. You know that you cannot think this way. You cannot act this way. You Automatically, you delete, right? Or you ignore. From within, okay, let's see. Uh, 21, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Now, when we sit down and begin to ponder and begin to ruminate on some of the things that we have received or the things that we have seen or we have heard, evil thoughts start to, you know, start to brew. Adulteries and fornications and murders, those are preconceived. Those are things that we process because we have a choice not to engage. But when you go on and engage, and you engage these negative thoughts and then you process them. And unknowingly, unknowingly, you start to act out. You start to act out that plan that has been hatched. Thefts and covetousness and wickedness and deceit and lasciviousness and evil eye, all right? <laughs> That's greed uh, or, you know, planning and looking at looking out and comparison, entitlement, all of that. We saw that in a few videos ago um, and a few, a few, a few videos um, a while ago blasphemy and pride and foolishness all of these are products of the heart the state of the heart verse 23 all these evil things come from within they're coming from within and those are what would defile a man those are things that would give you a clear picture if this person is of god that's why the bible says by your fruit by their fruit we shall know them your actions as the um, Englishman would say, okay, your actions speak louder than the words. English proverb would say that. But that's the truth. Your actions, how we say, what we say, and all of that, because words can be deceitful. Words, words can actually mask our original intent. So actions, the things that we do, no matter how long it takes for us to, you know, to perform all that, all that, are the things that will defile us. So it's not exactly about the things that you that that you listen to and all. Mm -mm. You have a choice to flush them out. You have a choice to to take them away, to to purge. You have a choice. So our actions are deliberate. There are things that we have to be intentional about. Our thoughts need to be examined. Okay, we need to examine our thoughts. Make sure that we are in the right state. All right, we make sure our thoughts honor God at all times. All right, and um, it, it just brings to mind um, the book of Philippians chapter 4, you know, whatsoever, thinking about whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are, things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are, yeah, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on, on these things. Let, let's quickly look at that, that scripture, because this is just talking about thoughts of the heart. So we need to be really careful what we think about and how we think about what we think about and how we do what we do after we are done thinking about what we're thinking about. Okay, if that makes some sense. <laughs> okay, so let's see uh, the book of um, the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, all right? Is there virtue in what you're thinking? And if there be any praise, think on these things. So that's my final message to you today. I'm going to see you in the next video, all right? Don't forget, dig deep into the word and set the scriptures for yourself. Get some encouragement, okay? Those of encouragement. Feel free to share this video. Be a subscriber if you're not, if you're not one already. I'll see you. God bless you.